In combinatorics, we will be covering these five topics either in this video or in the series of videos. Let us start. Combinatorics is the branch of mathematics concerned with counting, arranging, and selecting objects from a finite set. Basic counting gives us simple tools to find the number of outcomes without listing them all one by one. The first rule is the rule of sum. If one event can happen in m ways and another event can happen in n ways, but both cannot happen together at the same time, then there are m plus n total ways for either to occur. The second is the rule of product. It says that if one event can happen in m ways, and for each of those ways, another event can happen in n ways, which means each of these m events can happen in n ways, then the two events together can occur in m multiplied by n ways. Imagine you have three shirts, say red, blue, and green, and two trousers, say black and white. You want to know how many different outfits you can make by picking one shirt and one trouser. Start with the red shirt. You can pair it with black trouser or with white trouser. That gives two options. Next, take the blue shirt. And again, you can pair it with black or white, which gives two more options. Finally, the green shirt also gives two options. If you count all of them together, you have 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 6 outfits. So, instead of counting one by one, the rule of product lets us multiply the number of ways, which means three shirts multiplied by two trousers equals six outfits. Now let's see an example of the rule of sum. Suppose you can wear either a cap or a hat, but not both at the same time. If you have two types of caps and three types of hats, the total number of headwear choices is just the sum of the options, which is 2 plus 3 equals 5, right? This shows that when events are mutually exclusive, meaning only one can happen at a time, then we simply add the number of ways to find the total outcomes. Let us see if you can solve this. Imagine you are creating a password that has one letter followed by one digit, and that is followed by one special character. Suppose the letter can be any of these four letters, A, B, C, D, and the digit can be any of three digits, 1, 2, and 3, and we can have these three special characters only. Now can you find the total number of possible passwords that you can make? Let me know your answer in the comments. Great! Now let us understand permutations. What do we mean by permutation? A permutation is the number of possible arrangements of items in a set where the order matters. The main idea is that the order matters. For example, imagine you have three colored balls, red, blue, and yellow. One possible permutation is red first, blue second, yellow third. Another permutation could be blue first, yellow second, and red third. Even though the same three balls are being used, each different order counts as a different permutation because the positions are different. Now, let's see how to count permutations. Imagine you have four different books that you want to arrange on a shelf. For the first position, you can pick any of the four books. So there are four choices. Once the first book is placed, only three books are left to choose for the second position. After that, only two books remain for the third position. And finally, the last book automatically goes in the fourth position because it is the only one left. To find the total number of possible arrangements, we multiply the number of choices at each step, which gives 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1, which equals 24. Now think about it. Why do we multiply the number of choices at each step? For that, think of it like a chain. For the first spot, you have four options, and for each of those four, there are three options for the next spot. That means each first choice branches out into three possibilities, giving a total of four multiplied by three. Then each of those three branches has two options for the third spot, and finally one for the last. So using the rule of product, we get the total number of choices as 24. 
So, in general, if you have n objects, the same idea applies. For the first position, you have n choices. For the second position, n minus 1 choices, then n minus 2, and so on, until only one choice remains for the last position. The product of all these numbers is called n factorial, written like this. For example, 3 factorial is 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1, 7 factorial is this, and 0 factorial is defined as 1. Now consider this practice problem. Suppose a school is organizing a lineup of six students for a class photo, out of which three of them are boys and three are girls. If we want to arrange all six students in a line, then how many total possible arrangements can we have? It's simple, right? The answer will be 6 factorial, or 720. But, if we want to arrange the boys among themselves, and the girls among themselves, then can you find the total possible arrangements we can have? For that, we can split the problem. The three boys can be ordered in three factorial ways, which equals 6. The three girls can also be ordered in three factorial ways, which is 6 again. Then, using the rule of product, the total number of arrangements with boys and girls ordered within their groups is 6 multiplied by 6, which equals 36. Awesome! Now, sometimes we are not arranging all the objects, but only choosing a few of them to arrange. In that case, we use the formula n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Here, n is the total number of objects, and r is the number of objects we are arranging. For example, suppose we have five books and we want to arrange only three of them on a shelf. For the first place, we can choose any of the five books, for the second place, any of the remaining four, and for the third place, any of the remaining three. So, the total arrangements are five multiplied by four multiplied by three. Right? Now multiply and divide by two times one. To get this, hey, this is the same as 5 factorial, and the denominator is the same as 2 factorial. We can rewrite this 2 factorial as 5 minus 3 factorial, right? So this is equal to 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 3 factorial. Hence, the total number of permutations is 60. This formula helps us when order matters, but we are not using every item. Sometimes, in permutation problems, some objects are identical, and this changes the total number of arrangements. The reason is that when objects are identical, swapping them does not create a new arrangement. If we ignore this, we would count many arrangements more than once, which would give a wrong answer. To see this clearly, consider the word J-E-E-P. It has four letters in total. How many unique words can we form out of these four letters? Notice that out of these four letters, there are two E's that are identical. The letters J and P are unique, but the two E's are the same. Imagine we temporarily label the two E's as E1 and E2, treating all four letters as unique. If all four were truly unique, the total number of arrangements would be 4 factorial or 24 right? These are all the permuted words. But now, if we consider E1 and E2 as identicals, then maybe look at these two words. As you can see, when we treat the two E's as identical, those two different labeled arrangements collapse into one single unique word. So, this single unique word was counted two times in our original total of 24. Similarly, these two are also the same. This overcounting happens because there are two factorial ways to arrange the two identical E's. So, every unique word that can be made from J-E-E-P is counted two factorial times in the initial four factorial total words. To correct this overcounting, we must divide the total number of arrangements by the number of ways the identical letters can be arranged among themselves. So the correct answer will be 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial. Similarly, consider a random word K and three E's. 
How many unique words can we form out of these four letters? These are the 24 possible words, if we consider all the E's to be different. But notice that these three factorial or six words are the same if we remove the labels. Similarly, these three factorial or six words are the same if we remove the labels. This overcounting happens because there are three factorial ways to arrange the three identical E's. So, every unique word that can be made from this word is counted three factorial times in the initial four factorial total words. To correct this overcounting, correct answer will be four factorial divided by three factorial or only four words. Finally, consider the word level. It has five letters in total. Notice that out of these five letters, there are two L's and two E's that are identical. Now imagine if we label the two L as L1 and L2, and the two E as E1 and E2, temporarily treating them as different. Then we could simply calculate the total arrangements as five factorial, right? But many of these 120 arrangements are actually the same if we remove the labels. Now, because of the two identical L's, we have to divide 120 by two factorial times, right? This gives us 60. And because of the two identical E's, we have to divide the remaining 60 by two factorial times to get 30. Now, just to make a general formula, we can divide this 30 by one factorial of this V to get 30. So the answer is five factorial divided by two factorial times, two factorial times one factorial, which are 30 unique ways to arrange the letters in level. This five factorial is the total number of permutations. Then this two factorial is for two identical L, and then this two factorial is for two identical E, and this one factorial is for one V. In general, if there are N objects of which N1 are identical, then N2 are identical, and so on, Till we have nr, where r is the total number of unique objects, then this formula shows the total number of different permutations possible. Okay, now let me know in the comments how many unique arrangements can be made using the letters of the word balloon. Okay, now let us solve a somewhat difficult problem related to this topic. The question is that the letters of the word summer are permuted and all the permutations are arranged in alphabetical order, like in a dictionary. We want to find how many words appear before summer. For example, this is one permutation, this is another, and this is another permutation of this word. So, when they are arranged in alphabetical order, this will come first, then this, and then this. Similarly, summer will come here, right? So we see that two words appear before summer. This way, our job is to find the words that appear before summer for all the possible permutations. For that, first we will list all the letters in alphabetical order to help us visualize. The letters of summer are these. When arranged alphabetically, they are E, M, M, R, S, and then U, right? This helps us see which words will appear first in the dictionary. Now, look at the first letter of summer which is S. The letters that come before S are E, M, and R. For each of these letters as the first letter, we calculate the number of arrangements of the remaining five letters. If the first letter is E, the remaining letters are these, right? We have five letters with two identical Ms. So, the total arrangements are five factorial divided by two factorial, which is 120, over two or 60 words. Now, Let's focus on the case where the first letter is M. Since all the remaining letters are now distinct, the answer is 5 factorial, or 120 words. If the first letter is R, the remaining letters are these. Two M are still present, so arrangements are 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial equals 60 words. Adding all these words, 60 plus 120 plus 60 equals 240 words that come before words starting with S. Next, we will fix the first letter as S and cancel it from here. The second letter of summer is U. 
Letters that come before U in the remaining letters in alphabetical order are E, M, M, R. For each of these choices as the second letter, we calculate arrangements of the remaining four letters. For the second letter E, the remaining four letters are M, M, R, U, giving four factorial divided by two factorial or 24 divided by two factorial, equaling 12 words. For the second letter, M, the remaining four letters are E, M, R, U, giving four factorial or 24 words. For second letter R, the remaining four letters are M, M, E, U, giving four factorial divided by two factorial or 12 words. So the subtotal for words starting S, followed by a letter before U, is 12 plus 24 plus 12 which is 48 words. The third letter of summer is M. Letters that come before M in the remaining letters in alphabetical order are only E. So for the third letter as E, the remaining three letters are M, M, and R, giving three factorial divided by two factorial, or six divided by two, equals three words. Now the fourth letter of summer is again M. Letters that come before M in the remaining letters in alphabetical order are again only E. So for the fourth letter as E, the remaining two letters are M and R, giving two factorial or two words. Now it's easy to see that the remaining words E and R are already alphabetically arranged, and thus there are zero words that come before summer for the rest of the case. So finally, adding all the words counted till now gives 240 plus 48 plus 3 plus 2 equals 293 words that appear before summer in alphabetical order. And that's it. Were you able to solve it? If not, then try the word Boston using the same logic and let me know in the comments how many words appear before Boston. If letters of the word Boston are permuted, and all the permutations are arranged in alphabetical order, like in a dictionary. We will continue with the other topics like combinations, partitions, and multinomial theorem in the next video of this series, which is much more fun and interesting. But I will do so only if this video gets 5,000 likes. So good.